on Larry King now. Haley Joel Osment is back. Is there a misconception about child stars? I think if there is a misconception is that most of them come to a bad end. You were even nominated for an Academy Award, right? That's right. I remember Jodie Foster actually wrote me a letter when that happened that underlined the, the right way to go about it, that, you know, it's, it's kind of a bonus and not to take it too seriously and that the work is really the, uh, the reason why we do this. Plus... I play Kristen Wiig's villainous son. Most of my scenes are with her and you're in a really good place when, when you're in a scene with Kristen Wiig. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, a special guest. Good to have him with us. He's grown up Haley Joel Osmond. And now you know him, of course, from his breakout role in the award-winning film The Sixth Sense, one of the best movies ever. He's now grown up and starring in a miniseries alongside Kristen Wiig and Tim Robbins called The Spoils of Babylon. It's a six-part series, premieres January 9th at 10 Eastern, 9 Central on IFC. And to save you from doing the math, Haley is now 25 years old. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? I've interviewed a lot of actors who were kid actors and then grew up, and a lot of them had problems. Too much, too soon. You have had problems that way? No, I, I think I, I uh, was lucky to have uh, uh, great parents who uh, never pushed me to do anything that I didn't want to, and, uh, you know, just a uh, kept me focused on school and keeping a level head, and, and that really was something that kept me from running into some of the issues that you can in this business. How'd you get that part? The Sixth Sense? Uh, you were on our show right after that movie came that's out That's right, yeah. CNN, yeah. I remember that. And uh, I think Knight, Knight must have auditioned thousands of kids, and I just happened to, uh, I guess, catch his eye. And then what did you, did you do a lot of stuff after, or just continue with schooling? The, those few years around The Sixth Sense, I, I did a film with uh, Steven Spielberg uh, called AI, and uh, I- Artificial Intelligence. Artificial Intelligence, that's right. right. And, uh, uh, you know, a, f a few other films in there, and uh, just was, was lucky to come across some really cool roles for someone like finished school age. and everything? I did, yeah, and, and uh, I, I graduated NYU about uh, two and a half years ago. Great school. Yeah, I, and I loved moving to New York now. I'm, did you go to I'm, school of film? Uh, I went to uh, the Experimental Theater Wing there. So it was a tough decision between film and, and theater, but I felt like I had enough uh, on set experience that that would be, um, that, that theater would be just something a little bit more different for me. Tell me about this uh, miniseries, the Eric John Rush's Spoils of Babylon. The weird part I'm told is there is no Eric John Rush. Uh, perhaps not in this reality. In the, it's, it's a multi-layered reality, I would say, this, this miniseries. Explain this to me. I'm told it's based on a book that doesn't exist. Yes, I, I think uh, we created an Eric John Rush, and then he created this series of uh, incredibly uh, melodramatic and epic uh, uh, stories. And, and this, our one is about a, uh, a Texas oil dynasty and the multi, you know, the many generations of this family and their problems and the political and romantic intrigue that sort of is that the whole play. series, or that's just one of them? That's this one. I, I don't know uh, how far this universe might expand. Who do you play? I play uh, um, Kristen Wiig's villainous son, whose uh, uh, father is sort of a mystery to him, and he has uh, sort of megalomaniacal designs on the company. We're going to see a clip from the, I'm anxious to see this. Uh, this is The Spoils of Babylon. Eric John Rush's The Spoils of Babylon. Let's watch. <laughs> this is a comedy. Yes, I, I think you can probably tell how much fun we Was had. it fun to do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, uh, we just sort of got to take the lid off of our, you know, wildest imaginations with these characters. And, and we... It, the, the miniseries takes place over a wide, I think, like 50 years or something, so we all got to um, go crazy with costuming and wigs. Variety <laughs> called the Spoils of Babylon trailer, a cross between a Saturday Night Live spoof and a Paul Thomas Anderson film. <laughs> Can you, in a nutshell, explain it? It's, uh, it's, it's very hard to put in something that small, but it's uh, Kristen Wiig and Tobey Maguire are uh, star-crossed siblings uh, who... He's your uncle, then. 
sure. it's it's not really clear what our relationship is, <laughs> you know, and that that's part of the mystery is that we're not sure who is whose father, and there's some adoption going on. And very what what was she like? To, I love her. What was she like to work with? I mean, she's uh, a rock star, I would say, you know, and just most of my scenes were with her, and you just sort of. You're in a really good place when when you're in a scene with Kristen Wiig. And you play an evil person. Is that I do, right? and that I think a lot of actors will tell you is a lot more fun. You know, I do. I, you know, uh, instigate all sorts of violence and trouble in this miniseries. So. Now the cast is includes Val Kilmer, Tim Robbins, Tobey Maguire, Michael Sheen. How did you like working with that group? Uh, fantastic, and and it was a, a cast where everybody was really. Happy to be there, and and sort of was getting to do. We're getting to do things that they probably didn't normally get to do on on stage. I mean, uh, just for example, Tobey Maguire. I don't think people have seen him this wacky before and this off the wall. So I, he was certainly enjoying going in that direction. <laughs> and because of the uh, relationship with Will Ferrell and uh, Funnier Die, there's a lot of other things sort of off camera, and you know our EPK got to be really creative. So there's a lot of other pieces of this universe that will come out. Who does Will Ferrell play? Uh, 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 I actually, I'm not sure whether I'm, I'm allowed to say, because as you, as you know, he's not in the trailer, so I think we're keeping his part a little bit under wraps until... He's a, so. he's a wacko guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, but just, uh, 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 finds brilliant takes on, on even the most mundane sort of situation. Coming up, Haley on Growing Up Famous and the role that made him a household name. We'll talk about that right after this. We're back with Haley Joel Osment. He stars as one of the stars in The Spoils of Babylon. It's a six-part series coming January 9th on IFC. When you made Sixth Sense, did you know that it was going to grab the public as much as it did? Did you know that the ending was just wild? I mean, when you got that script as a nine-year-old, <laughs> what did you think? Yeah, my, uh, uh, my Hollywood knowledge wasn't so developed when I was nine, <laughs> but I, I mean, it was something that really grabbed you, even being a kid. It was, I, I, I had read a lot of scripts for a nine-year-old, and that was still one that sort of stuck out. Do you like working with Bruce Willis? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was it like to be known young? I guess I, I got used to it quickly, because uh, I, I started very early. I did, uh, Forrest Gump was my first film, and I was four when we made that, so. You were the kid? I was, yeah. But I was really used to being on a set early, and that was a comfortable environment for me. And I guess just when you're a kid, other than doing interviews and things like that, there wasn't uh, sort of an, an off-screen Hollywood experience that I had. I still went to school, and. What about your classmates? How'd they treat you? Uh, they were excited by it, but a lot of the films that I did weren't really aimed at children, so I think that... Uh, they didn't see them, then? Uh, many of them, no. I mean, when I did The Sixth Sense, I don't think a lot of 10-year-olds, uh, I don't think we're even allowed to go in the movie yeah. theater for that one, so... You know, when you look at young stars today, like Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus, they have problems. Uh, and a lot of earlier stars of past who worked in movies grew up with a lot of problems. They Directors treated them differently. They would... There's a great story in Boys Town, the making of Boys Town, there's a scene in which a kid really cries bad because his friend runs away. Mm. And they got that kid to cry by telling him that his grandfather died. Oh, man. <laughs> they lied to him, and they created a great scene. Mm. Can you see those problems occurring? Fame early? Sure, I mean, it's, it's a, a lot of pressure to take. And, uh, you know, I, I, but I honestly believe that there are more uh, uh, positive outcomes and there are negative ones. And obviously we hear about the, the really terrible stories more than we do the good ones. But a lot of the people that I've worked with uh, just just recently in, in this miniseries and are people who have been acting for a long time. And uh, working in California, the laws are very strict, you know, protecting your school time and how you're treated on set, you know. And I think a lot of those bad stories come from times before we really protected children on, on set the way How's, that they made now it. What did your parents do? Uh, my mom is a sixth grade teacher and my dad uh, is an actor. And is that why you went the acting? How did did they push you? No, it was it was almost sort of an accident. Uh, my my family's from uh, Alabama originally. I was born in California, and they moved out here because my dad was running a theater on Santa Monica Boulevard, and I was just spotted at a cattle call. Um, they were taking Polaroids of kids at IKEA one day, and they called me in for a cattle call thing for commercials. Uh, and the Forrest Gump casting agent saw the first commercial I did for Bigfoot Pizza at Pizza Hut, and it just sort of went from there. So 
just kind of an accident. <laughs> did you like it right away? I did. Yeah, and I, I knew what my dad did even as a little kid. I uh, knew that he, you know, he did plays, and and my mom being a teacher always really focused on. Uh, imagination and you know that sort of thing so the set seemed to be an illogical extension how did they feel about your success uh, I think they they had the same concerns that you know you mentioned about what happens to kids in the business so they always were telling me you know if it isn't fun and you don't want to do it anymore you only you know you can go back to school it was never something that they pushed me to do uh, and I think that yeah I mean very early on uh, it was very much driven from what you know my desire to keep doing this and keep you know, you were even nominated for an Academy Award, right? That's right. Yes. What was that like? You that was crazy. Win, right? That was, yeah, I, I remember that night very well. Uh, and just even at a young age knowing that, I think a really good, you know, actually, I, I remember Jody Foster actually wrote me a letter when that happened that underlined the, the right way to go about it, that, you know, it's, it's kind of a bonus and not to take it too seriously and that the work is really the, uh, the reason why we do this. And that and what my parents were saying sort of I think is the reason that I was able to keep a, a level head with all that craziness going around. When you're doing scenes with like Bruce Willis, was it easy to be comfortable that he helped you a lot? Certainly. Yeah, he's he's a, a, a very... You were the only one seeing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess we had sort of a one-on-one -on -one in that movie. Uh, I guess the secret's out now. Uh, but um, but yeah, no, he was uh, really fun to be around, loves, loves being around kids. It was a hell of a movie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is there a misconception about child stars? Um, I think if there is a misconception is that most of them come to a bad end. And I think that the, the real situation is that most of them either act a little and go back to, you know, lead normal lives outside of the public eye or, you know, uh, have careers, you know, long, good careers, even if they're not with the intense spotlight that you get as a kid. So. Did you work while you were at NYU? A little bit. Yeah, it was, it was a, uh. Uh, almost a conservatory program. There was academic classes too, so the the workload was really big. But I still did a play on Broadway and one independent film while I was What'd there. What did you do on Broadway? Uh, we did David Mamet's American Buffalo. You so, were in American Buffalo. Yeah. Yes. Who'd you play? Uh, I was uh, Bobby in that one. Who starred in it? Uh, uh, it was John Leguizamo and Cedric the Entertainer, whose picture I, I saw on your wall in the green room. <laughs> so I know you've talked to him. Yeah. Wow. That's Al Pacino's. That's right, and Robert Duvall going back yeah. in the day, yeah. David Mamet. Yeah. You like the language? <laughs> oh, I do, yeah, and, and being a theater student, it was, it was a great, great opportunity. Up next, he's back with a vengeance. We'll talk about Haley's many upcoming projects right after the break. You're gonna see Haley Joel Osment in uh, the upcoming uh, premiere of The Spoils of Babylon, which if you understand it, you'll write us a letter and explain <laughs> what it means. But he's got a lot of things uh, working on. You're working on a Kevin Smith film called Tusk. That's what right. What is that? Uh, that is a... Smith was here last year. Oh, he was, yeah, great. great guy. We've, we've been uh, trying to work with each other for, uh, for some time. This is a, a murder comedy. Um, about two guys with a podcast, you get involved with some in a really sort of touchy situation. So, are you one of the guys? I am. Yeah, me and Justin Long have a fictional podcast, and and we get into some trouble. You're also in the World Made Straight, an independent comedy. Uh, that that's a drama, actually. That one's based on the 2006 book, and that's Jeremy Irvine and uh, Noah Wiley. Uh, that's a drama. The indie yeah. comedy is me, him, her, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you played gay last year in Sassy Pants. That's right, I did. <laughs> did you worry at all about offending the gay community in that? We, yeah, I mean, I am very sensitive to the uh, uh, lack of, of roles that there are for, um, you know, for gay characters out there and everything. So I, I, I certainly thought about it, but I, I felt good about doing it because the character was not the butt of the joke, that he had his own... Uh, you know, reasons for being the way that he was and had his own sort of part of the story that, that made him a uh, sympathetic and three-dimensional character. And the filmmaker um, uh, was gay as well, so her, her view with this movie was not to pick fun. Did you have gay people. friends? Oh, certainly, yeah. Did they object at all? No, I, I, the response uh, was uh, overwhelmingly positive. And we did, you know, Outfest and all of the, the gay film festivals and everything, and I was, I was uh, very happy that they, they appreciated the role and liked the movie. Do you like doing independent films? I do. Yeah, it's you know it's it's harder and harder to get these tiny films made without an obvious you know foreign distribution plan and everything. But a lot of the most 
uh, uh, groundbreaking work and sort of, you know, opportunities to play unusual characters comes through the independent route. In fact, the hardest thing in the world is to get a movie made, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's, uh, even more these days, you know, that the, there's this thing called the grid that agents have, which show all the movies being made and the roles in them. And I was talking to someone at my agency recently, and they said it used it was right, like this in 2000, and now it's like this with films being made. Is there anything you won't do? Uh, hard to think of something off the top of my head, you know, oh, in terms of playing a role. <laughs> you would do nude scenes? Uh, it really depends on the... Uh, I wouldn't be looking for one, but I, I, I wouldn't be, rule it out. <laughs> you remember your first audition? You were five, right? Yes. What did you audition for? It was uh, just saying the line that I ultimately said on television, which was, uh, big would be an understatement, talking about a pizza in front of a white wall. <laughs> That's all you had to say? That's all I had to say. Yeah. Big would be an understatement. Big would be an understatement, yes. <laughs> Aren't auditions nerve-wracking? They can be. Um, some of them are more comfortable than others, and, and it just depends on how much preparation you've had to do. If it's a last minute thing, uh, that can be nerve wracking. But if you have the opportunity to really come in there prepared and memorized and, and having thought about the character, I actually enjoy the process. Do you read criticism? Uh, not usually. You know, you, you usually hear about the positive and negative responses. So, you know, the internet can be kind of a, a, a minefield with sort of searching uh, for opinions don't take of yourself. It seriously. So, no. <laughs> did you know that you did well in The Sixth Sense? I mean, when you finished that, did you know, I nailed this? Yes, and there's a thing, I think, that actors will tell you that the only way you can really know is, is you know, within yourself, though there are people who will tell you good things and bad things, and the only, you can only trust that third eye that you have of knowing if you really uh, satisfied what the scene needed. Do you want to do more theater? Certainly, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to, the, the process and, and the experience is so different between film and theater that I, I would love to keep mixing it up going forward. Do people recognize you? I mean, you're different looking than when you were nine. Right. Do people recognize you or not? It does. It, it surprises me because uh, I don't even recognize myself in those movies back then. But uh, yeah, people, I, it's, it just amazes me how the sort of wide attention that film got, you know, that still today, people remember it. How do you think the critics, how do you think the public will react to the spoils of Babylon? I think, hopefully, the, the confusion will be put to rest once you see the story laid out the way that it is, but... The, from that clip, yeah. I'm more confused. I, I, yeah, I think once you, once you start, you know, following this epic story, it, it, the, the plot will make sense, and it's just, it's so crazy, I think people will really enjoy going on that journey. When we come back, Haley will take your questions, and we'll play a game called uh, If You Only Knew. Our guest is Haley Joel Osmond, and you'll see him in The Spoils of Babylon coming in January. We'll be right back. Back with Haley Joel Osmond. Good to be with him again. I hear you don't have a Facebook page. No, my my online presence is pretty much uh, you don't zero. You have a Twitter? None of those. No. I mean, I'm not saying that I wouldn't going forward because it, it seems to be the primary way that people will keep in touch with. Why me. have you resisted it, Haley? It's really never been in my my personality. You know, I. Uh, you know, I, and, and it, I think it has something to do with, you know, living in New York City, a lot of my relationships are face-to-face. -face. You know, I don't, I like I don't really spend a lot of time on the phone at all. So, yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot of good about it, but... Um, you don't text? I do text, yeah. I don't yeah. text. But I'm, I'm impressed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about this obsession with social media? I mean, there's, there's good and bad aspects of it. You can, if, if you have you know, a job or something that takes you far away from family and friends, it's a, obviously a wonderful way to well, keep in touch. You can spread lies on it, too, too. But, yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, the, the attitude seems to be negative online a lot when you have the, the benefit of being anonymous when you're, you know, writing yeah, things true. online. Yeah. Okay, uh, we got a lot of questions for you on social media. Cody Joe Brown on Facebook, do you ever seek advice from veteran actors you work with about how to proceed in the business? With the business side of it, uh, not as much. With the craft itself, I mean, I've had uh, amazing opportunities to work with, you know, all the way to uh, Robert Duvall and Michael Caine recently, just people who've had decades and decades in the what industry. What did you do with them? Uh, a film called Secondhand Lions in 2003. Oh, I missed that, and Michael Caine... I missed it. Michael Caine said to me, you've got to see this movie. It's, yeah, I mean, people talk to me about that movie a lot. And, and the whole point of that film was about two, uh, two of his great uncles stepping in and sort of uh, helping to raise this kid in his young teens. And so as an actor getting to work with people who are such legends in the, in the industry, yeah, the, the onset opportunity to just listen to the stories they had to tell and to when watch When you're working with actors like that, 
and you blow a line, as everyone does, does that embarrass you more? I try really hard not to blow a line in, the, in those situations. Are so. you good at remembering? Yeah, just just the, the practice over the years has, has helped. You know, and makes, theater, too, will train you to, to memorize large blocks of text. So if movies have shorter amounts, you have to do it one time. Nutmeg79 Twitter wants to know what your experience was like on the set of Forrest Gump. I, I remember it very well. Um, I learned to tie my shoes on that set because I was four. Uh, we shot at the Gump House, which was this mansion in this swamp in, in Beaufort, Carolina. Um, it was a, a, a the craziest thing I'd done to my, you know, in my life that far. And I remember Tom Hanks being uh, probably the most focused actor I had seen, you know, at that stage. Also kind. Very kind, yeah. Very just, just really an actor that you're lucky to work with. Zemeckis directed it, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, great guy. Uh, Carol Burley on Facebook wants to know if you want to stay in the movie business long term. I do, you know. And if it wasn't acting, uh, there's other aspects of it. I, I love the whole process of making movies and and putting on plays, and it's uh, it's hard to imagine me, you know, leaving that anytime soon. And Osgvo tweets: Had Stanley Kubrick lived to direct it, how would AI have turned out versus the Spielberg version? Kubrick was supposed to direct it. No, actually, that that's a, um, I'm I'm actually glad to get that question. That's a common uh, misconception. From the beginning, uh, Kubrick had presented the project to Spielberg as a Stanley Kubrick production of a Steven Spielberg film. Oh, Kubrick so, wasn't going to direct. No, he wanted to, and it, it was a big loss to everybody because this was a film that he wanted to use to come a little bit back into the spotlight and do some interviews. This is what uh, Christiane Kubrick has said in, in interviews. Um, and he died, unfortunately, uh, before he could come out. But all, what Steven's plan for the film was very, very, very faithful to all of the planning that, that uh, Kubrick had done. What was it like to work with Steven? Uh, extraordinary, you know, and just the, the uh, scale of that film. We, we had like six stages on the Warner lot and, you know, hundreds of people working on this project and, and special effects that were, you know, groundbreaking at the at the time, and, and, and you know Stan Winston's robots and the animatronic bear. There are just so many things that were completely unique to that. I learned to scuba dive on that film. Like just just a crazy year long adventure. You ever pinch yourself, Haley? You've had a great young life. Oh yeah, I, I certainly um, feel grateful for the for the things that I've had. You know, the experiences that I've had. Boy, at 25. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tweak on Twitter wants to know if you intend to sign up on Twitter. A lot of people ask him about that. They I, want you to do it. Yeah, they do. I know. I can understand. I, I wouldn't rule it out, but they, um, I probably wouldn't do it of my own accord. I'd have to I have to get peer pressured. <laughs> we finished the show with a little game called If You Only Knew. You remember the first girl you kissed? Yes. What was her name? It was in a movie. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was... Uh, what was her name? Was it Ola? Oh, it was a Polish girl. I was doing a film in Poland where I played a Jewish boy hiding from the Nazis. How old were you? Eleven. I had this little romance. So it was. You ever know what happened to her? Uh, no, but she was a fine actress, so I'm sure she's doing well. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure you have? We may not know about. Guilty pleasure. Um, living in New York, there's so many restaurants to try. I'm getting a little bit, uh, that's one thing that the internet has done for me is I love hunting out new restaurants and things like that. Most embarrassing moment. Most embarrassing moment. There's so many as an actor, okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't choose one. You have a secret talent we don't know about. A secret talent. Um, I, uh, I play the guitar. You do? I do, yeah. You ever played it publicly? I don't think so, no. Maybe at a terrible high school party. Last time you were starstruck. Last time I was starstruck, uh, Paul McCartney. Pet peeve. Um, pet what peeve. bugs you? What bugs me? Uh, early morning construction in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Characteristic you appreciate most in other people? Uh, honesty. Band you can't stop listening to? Uh, My Bloody Valentine. You're on Desert Island. What three things would you like to have with you? Uh, books, a good internet connection, Unlimited food supply, I guess. So <laughs> Proudest accomplishment. <laughs> Proudest accomplishment, um, uh, graduating college. If you weren't an actor, what do you think you'd be? A uh, writer. Is there something no one knows about you? Probably a lot that <laughs> in the inner life, yeah. But uh, I, I went to Cuba in 2011. Uh, you did? To, to I went in project. 2009. Yeah, fascinating, isn't it? Beautiful yeah. city. Yeah, really wonderful. Yeah. Great seeing you again, nice Haley. Nice talking to you. Haley Joel Osment, you'll see him next in The Spoils of Babylon on IFC, premieres January 9th. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. 
and we'll see. Maybe you'll find him on Twitter someday, too. Someday. We'll see you next time. <laughs>